Hi members. I just wanted to send out a quick video for everybody in uh, this time which currently feels like a crisis. And in this time what I'm really hungry for is a sense of connection and community. I've been so glad to see so much participation on the listserv and so much of us reaching out to each other and providing support and advice uh, and all the recommendations that are coming out and all the legislative updates. I also wanted to urge everybody to continue to consult uh, as appropriate. And I think especially in times like these where there might be a pull to react very quickly, that actually taking some time to really intentionally reach out to the people that are here to support us in our practice, in our work that we're doing with clients, that taking this time to really reach out to the people that are here to support us is actually a good, a good idea. Uh, we do have people who are present on the listserv that are helpful and want to offer their services. So if that's you, please feel free to send your name to me. Uh, and I'm happy to include that uh, in an email and in a list of resources that the organization might provide. I also wanted to keep everybody updated that the board and I are currently working on making sure that there is a consistent set of messaging that's going on. So it's my goal as your president to rather than update you every day with information that might be one, one thing one day, another thing another day, to rather in a consistent way provide a set of messaging that is clear and supportive. So I'm working with the board to coordinate that effort and to move with intention and hopefully with a grounded sense of how to move forward, that's precisely what I wanna model. So I wanted to offer a story to everybody and this is a story that I have offered to my clients. I've offered it historically uh, when clients come in and ask for a solution. I know that this is a clinical issue that is not uncommon in our work uh, and, you know, at some points, sometimes our work actually does ask us to provide a solution. Uh, there are behavioral recommendations, things like that, that we can often lean on in terms of our training and our scope of practice that are helpful in terms of helping clients move through particularly difficult periods in their, in their world. Uh, and sometimes, unfortunately, there are moments where there isn't a clear answer. There isn't a good recommendation. There isn't something that soothes the anxiety or the fear that tends to come up. And so that's when I offer the story. And so the story that I want to offer is the story about a kingdom, a kingdom in chaos and in peril. And then during that time, the ruling body summons five superlative knights to court and calls on them for their aid. So within this band of knights, the folks who are present are the wisest knight, the strongest knight, the cleverest, the wildest, and the quietest. So these five knights come together and they set out on a hero's journey. They find the path that will lead them to a temple within it contains a power that will help bring the kingdom back to a sense of steadiness and soothe the chaos that's threatening the land. The path is not without its peril. This is a hero's journey. There are trials, there are, they lose the path, they have to fight monsters, there are demons that are taking them off of the path and into, you know, away from this path of virtue. And they are successful. So this group of knights is able to finally get to the temple, to access the thing that will take care of the chaos. The only unfortunate thing is that the path arrives at the door and there's no obvious way in. There's an outline of a door, there's no doorknob, there's no key, there's no guardian, there's just nothing. And so the wisest knight steps forward first and he says, Sometimes the best answer is the simplest one. Maybe we're just at the wrong door. And so he takes it upon himself to go around the temple, to look up the temple to see if there is any 
other way into the temple. He's unsuccessful. The strongest knight steps forward and she says, I know the way out of this. The way out of this is to summon all of our strength, to use all of our skill and bash down the door. And so she does. She's unsuccessful. The third knight, the cleverest knight, steps forward. She's armed with a book. In that book are laws, are statistics, are things that in so many times of need she summoned to be able to leverage, to figure out the most rational and logical solution to the problem. And so she opens her book, she reads the, the plans, the architectural information about the temple. She summons an incantation to open the door. She knows how to do this. She knows how to solve this problem. The door doesn't open. And so the wildest knight steps forward. When we're not entirely sure that the wildest knight has a clear set of, of pronouns, a clear set of, of rules, the wildest knight comes from the darker parts of the kingdom and is summoned when the problem needs a creative solution. Because sometimes we need to reimagine the problem or recontextualize the problem in order to find the solution. And so the knight steps forward and they pull out an instrument and they proceed to sing at the temple, hoping that what might be the answer is to recognize that the temple has a set of consciousness that maybe we don't understand. Unfortunately, the door does not open. And so the knights themselves descend into chaos. No, this is the right answer. This is the right answer. Do this, do that. This is how we should do it. You're not helping. You're doing this. And amidst all of this, the quietest knight steps forward. The quietest knight steps forward, kneels in front of the door, and waits. Now this could look like giving up. This could look like, you know, I'm just gonna check out, I'm gonna go home, it's not really useful. It could look like hiding. And I also want to caution that and equanimity, the ability to step forward amidst, amidst chaos and kneel, is not the absence of fear. That knight is terrified. The kingdom is at peril. The things that ground him, that keep him connected, are potentially threatened. And yet he still steps forward, closes his eyes, and turns into himself. There will be a solution. There will be a way out. And so time passes. Who can say how long time, time passes? It stops having any meaning. It could be a blink. It could be an eternity that time goes on. And eventually, the door opens. And the knight is allowed into the temple, receives the wisdom necessary to bring peace back to the kingdom and the group is successful so this is perhaps a very thin metaphor you've probably caught on to my argument here the work that i want to offer to folks is not let's sit down and all meditate i'm not sure that that's actually the answer i would actually call that spiritual bypassing but it is instead that you have many tools all of us have all of these nights in front of us and we're all leaning on all of this. And sometimes the way to connect to hope, the way that to connect to the most centered part of who we are is to take in all of this information, hold it, hold all of these different things and wait for things to unfold. There, we, there is hope. We hear stories from Italy, from China, all these different kinds of things, and there is fear, not diminishing the reality of it. These are real and true things. I believe in our organization, and I believe in us as practitioners that we have all that we need, even if we don't have the skills to meet this particular crisis, we know how to reach out and ask for help. 
I believe in this organization and I believe in every one of you. Please continue to reach out. Please consult. Please go slowly. These are things that I would encourage you. Thank you, everybody, for your time. If you stayed with me for this long, I really appreciate it. Take care.